if you use BigQuery and need to process vast amounts of data, but native SQL just isn't cutting it for a use case, there is a tool you should know about – serverless Spark procedures. Let me show you how to set it up step by step. Hi, I'm Eugene and I'm a data engineer. In this video, I want to show you and share a step-by-step -step guide how to set up serverless Spark stored procedures in BigQuery. Before we dive into the guide, just a tiny remark on why would you even consider using Spark stored procedures in BigQuery. Recently, I have worked on the task that serves as a pretty good real-world example. So in a few words, we had a store procedure written in Google SQL scripting language, uh, which is based on the native SQL, and uh, its goal was to detect changes on the table between yesterday's state of the data and today's state, and then transform these changes in the appropriate uh, form and export it to Google Cloud Storage. If you look closer on the requirements for this uh, procedure, you will realize that doing it with a SQL-like language can be quite complex. And this was an issue. Despite the fact that this procedure was well written and did its job, but at certain point when we needed to extend it with a certain functionality, it was just too hard to come back to it and to edit it, because it involved a query information schema, it involved for loops and pivoting. By solving this problem with PySpark, uh, we have made this procedure more configurable, possible to cover with automated tests, and significantly reduced its complexity. In the end, making the code just easier to work with and easier to maintain in the future. And with that, I think we are finally good to begin. Let's open BigQuery. Alright, uh, let's start by creating a new project just for this stuff in GCP. Uh, let's name it Spark Procedure. Now let's switch on it. Okay, it's created, Spark Procedure, fine. Fine, fine, fine. So. First things first, uh, we need to ensure that our user has uh, roles that you can see now on the screen. It's a project I am admin to grant full control over I am policies at the project level. It is needed to assign these roles uh, that we're going to need below. Uh, then a user needs to have a service account admin to create service accounts. BigQuery Connection Admin to manage uh, BigQuery external connections, BigQuery Data Editor because we are going to perform some actions uh, in BigQuery, and uh, BigQuery Job User to provide permissions to run jobs in BigQuery, BigQuery Metadata Viewer to view and access BigQuery stored procedures within a dataset, and finally BigQuery Connection User. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is to enable BigQuery Connection API. So search for it in the search bar, and here it is. And for me, it's enabled already, but for you, you are going to have to enable it if it's not enabled. Now we will create a service account that we will assign to our store procedure. So let's go to IAM and admin. Then service accounts, create service account, let's give it a name, Spark Procedure Demo, create and continue. Now we are going to need to assign a certain roles to it. So uh, first things first, BigQuery Data Editor, because the code that this procedure will run, it's going to create a BigQuery table. Next, uh, BigQuery job user to uh, run BigQuery jobs. Now, BigQuery read session role to uh, read sessions. And the final one, uh, storage admin, because we will write output files to uh, cloud storage. And this is it. Then click done. Fine, so storage account is created. 
Now let's create a GCS uh, bucket because as I said, we will write results in this bucket. I'll go to GCS, create bucket, uh, let's name it Spark Procedure, continue. Uh, here is an important thing. For region, let's select a multi-region, uh, US, or Asia, EU, whatever. I'll choose EU and uh, this is it. Uh, we can create it now. Here, uh, don't change anything. Uh, we want to enforce public access prevention on this bucket. Click Confirm. Great, now we have a bucket. With that, it's finally time for us to go to BigQuery. All right, so now that we are in BigQuery, let's create a data set. Uh, let's name it whatever we want. You need to use uh, underscores here. Spark procedure for a uh, region whatever we selected before, for me it's multi-region EU and create data set. We will write the uh, procedure output to this data set and also uh, the temporary instance of procedure will be created in this uh, data set, as you will see now. So let's click uh, this uh, chevron and store procedure and now let's click more by Spark options for a uh, location type multi-region EU or whatever you selected before. Uh, for connection, we need to create a Spark connection for BigQuery. Uh, for connection type, let's select Apache Spark, connection ID, uh, whatever you want. I'll name my, I'll name my Spark uh, demo. Multi-region, EU, and uh, this is it create connection. So now it should be selected here. Uh, store procedure invocation is like a place uh, where the uh, temporary instance of store procedure will be created. It's absolutely fine to leave it as uh, invoke using a temporary data set. BigQuery will just create a temporary data set for you. But we have a dedicated data set, so I'll select it and it's fine. Uh, you click here and select the data set that we created. And now, super important, click to on advanced options, scroll down and in service account section, uh, select a service account that we have created in the beginning of this guide. If you don't select it, then you face an error because uh, this store procedure will operate under the service identity of the BigQuery Spark connection. It could be absolutely fine because you could like assign uh, certain roles to this uh, BigQuery managed service account. But in our case here, we have created a dedicated service account for this procedure and let's uh, just keep using it. So we have selected the service account and click uh, save. So this is a simple code from the docs. Uh, you will be able to find it in the video description. Uh, so first it creates a Spark session, reads uh, public data to the Spark data frame, and it's gonna perform some super basic transformation with uh, group by and uh, sum. Uh, then it will uh, print it in the logs with the show and it will also print schema. And here uh, it will write the results to BigQuery. Here we need to update only one thing. Here we set a data set name that we have just created. And uh, it will also write results to GCS bucket that we have created. And the name of the bucket is Spark Procedure in my case. Uh, so I'll update it here and this is it. Uh, it should be fine and let's run it. So uh, first things that it does, it creates an instance temporary instance of this uh, procedure. So if I open the dataset, you will see that now we have this temp instance here, which basically just has a code of this uh, procedure. It's a temporary one, BigQuery will remove it. Then it actually calls this uh, temporary procedure and um, it will take about three minutes to finish. Uh, it's quite long, quite long, but the reason for it is uh, that uh, the 
time to provision a Spark job running environment takes about uh, one and a half, two minutes. So actual processing takes less time in this case than just provisioning everything there. And while we wait, as you can see in uh, external connections, we have a connection, Spark connection that we have created. And uh, when I was talking about uh, connections service identity, so this is it, the service account created for this connection by GCP. So essentially you could just assign to this service account roles uh, that we have assigned to our custom service account. And then you wouldn't need to specify a custom service account. But this is just like two different ways of uh, achieving uh, the same thing. And it's done. So it took three minutes. So let's uh, view the logs. Um, yeah, let's view the logs. Um, so first it like provisioned the running environment. It uh, took quite some time. Uh, and um, yeah, then it has started executing. And what I don't really like, uh, you can see like some strange errors here in the logs. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't able to like uh, discover why they're happening because uh, they are not crashing the job, job finishes, but yeah, they just appear in logs. Here, as you can see, uh, the result of the data frame dot show, where it shows like the count of occurrences of each word, and then the print of the schema. And now, I think if I refresh, uh, if I refresh the contents, here is the output table in BigQuery. Cool, and uh, in procedure bucket, we should have a file. Yeah, we have it. Cool. Great. And this is actually it. If you are interested in a deeper dive, in the video description I leave a link to my article on uh, Medium, uh, which describes actually like everything that uh, we have done in this video, but a bit more in depth uh, on every and other aspect with uh, a bit more examples and a bit more theory. It should take you about 15 minutes to read, but it's uh, extremely good. It's uh, super detailed. Uh, and uh, if you feel like this video wasn't enough for you or you need like a text version to clearly understand what's going on, I definitely recommend checking it out because there also I have like some stuff that I didn't mention in this video. So yeah. Please check it out. It's absolutely free, publicly accessible, and I hope uh, I hope you like it. And that's actually it. I hope this guide was helpful to you and everything worked out smoothly. But if it didn't for some reason and you had faced certain issues or errors, there is a chance that Google could have changed something. Then don't worry, just uh, write your issue in the comments section and I will genuinely try to help you to fix it. I plan to create two more videos on running serverless Spark in BigQuery. In this video, we have done everything via console UI. It's absolutely fine for exploration and learning purposes. But uh, in the real world use cases, we will most likely need some form of automation here and there. And that's actually where second and third videos come in. In the second video, we are gonna use a popular nowadays tool called dbd to run serverless Spark jobs in BigQuery. In the third and final video, we will ship it as infrastructure as a code using Terraform. Again, we will create a Spark stored procedure and we will also make it run on schedule. If this sounds interesting to you, Please subscribe to the channel and drop a comment. It will give me a huge motivation to continue and to work faster. With that, thanks for watching and happy coding.